Um, as we did the introduction already, I'm going to talk about process automation and insights across M365 data using Microsoft Graph in Azure today. Um, just to recap, my name is Aisha Bash, and I live in Dubai. I'm working at Microsoft Developer Relations as a cloud advocate, and I'm focusing on Microsoft Graph uh, and Microsoft Teams specifically. And uh, I'm a developer, and I'm trying to uh, create projects around Microsoft Graph by using Azure. And I'm posting a lot of stuff on Twitter in my own blog and also Microsoft official blogs too. Um, if you are interested in learning more about it or um, if you have some other questions, you can always reach out to me on Twitter. So let's start with the uh, agenda today. First of all, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit of overview of Microsoft Graph, and then we will jump into Microsoft Graph and Azure app development. Um, it, actually, my speech is going to be pretty much 100% uh, technical. Um, after that, we will discover user interactive scenarios. Then we will check what we can do with non-interactive scenarios. And the last part we're going to cover is reporting, analytics, and insight, uh, insight scenarios. And uh, at the end, I, I'm going to cover some links that might be useful for everyone. OK, so let's quickly have an overview around M365 platform. As you know, M365 is quite big, and we have lots of documentation tools and um, lots of products we can consume. But today, specifically, we're going to uh, discover what we can do with the data in those pro uh, products, uh, in, inside of those products. Let's think about, for example, Microsoft Teams or Outlook. We're using all of them day to day. And we have a huge data in the background. Every company or individual has a huge data in the background of M365 platform. And actually, by using them, uh, we can create great bot projects, web apps, uh, or uh, daemon apps, workflow automation, or we can also use these uh, data in the analytics for auditing purposes or some business review uh, perspective and so on. And to be able to reach out that data, we always use Microsoft Graph. Let's check out what is Microsoft Graph. It's a gateway to your data in the Microsoft Cloud. Let's say that um, we are using, again, day-to-day -day our uh, tools like calendar tasks. Um, we are joining groups. We are chatting on Teams. And each time we use these products, your data is staying under Microsoft uh, Cloud. That doesn't mean that Microsoft has access to your data. You actually have access to your own data. And by consuming all these data, you can create great projects around it. Like by consuming all these calendar, mail, tasks, and information, for example, you can create a great um, agent assistant for you, bot assistant, which can gather all of the important events of the day. Or you can just automate background provisioning processes by using Azure Functions. And we're going to discover all these scenarios in this presentation. So quickly, to be able to build an app by using Graph and Azure, um, first of all, you can check out docs. Um, you can go to aka.ms slash m-graph, uh, which you will find lots of uh, documentation around each graph-related uh, product and how to consume that. Plus, you can see there are lots of tutorials and quick starts documentation around languages you prefer. If you are a .NET developer, you can choose .NET and go through the entire tutorial. From You can build an application from scratch. If you prefer Angular or React, you can choose React. And you can, again, create an application by consuming Microsoft Graph from, from scratch. And the second tool I highly recommend is Graph Explorer. It's a free tool that we can go ahead and uh, sign in. When we sign in, we can start consuming our own uh, data. Uh, and we can call any Graph API we want directly through the uh, Graph Explorer. I'm going to show that in one of my demos today. And the third thing, we need to create an application in Identity Platform. We need to register an app in Azure Active Directory. By using that app, you're going to access to M365 data. Let's say you want to uh, reach out to email data. Then again, we need to create an application in the background, say that we need permissions for the email or the calendar. And whenever user consents, 
uh, the permissions or whenever admin consents, we will be able to reach out that data and continue our process. And um, after configuring the app permissions, we need uh, AMSOL, Microsoft Authentication Library for signing in and getting the token. Once we have the token of the person or of the app, then we can call Graph API where we want, literally. It can be a mobile app, it can be uh, functions, jobs in the, running in the background, it can be web application or any kind of app. It's basically an API, REST API, you can call wherever you want. So, this is a quick overview of Graph Explorer. Um, Graph Explorer, as I mentioned, it's a tool um, I can actually quickly show you. It's a tool where we can authenticate quickly and after signing in and giving the consent to Graph Explorer, we can choose any API we want to try out on the left side and we can see our data in the response preview. Uh, in addition to that, in the code snippets, you can find out how to implement this data in uh, your applications. If you are using C Sharp, you can copy paste your C Sharp part in your application and it's gonna work. So I want to quickly um, go through the documentation with you as well as um, the Graph Explorer because I'm assuming it's gonna be the first time for um, some colleagues to um, see these kind of tools. So I open the browser. I can zoom in a little bit. Oh, I did that again. I did it in the morning too. Zoom. Okay. So first, I'm going to go to ak.ms slash m dash graph. With that, I'll be directed to documentation. And in, in this documentation, you can find all of the uh, REST API guidelines. Uh, API version 1 and beta is available. And if you're new to Microsoft Graph, you can check out quick starts and as well as the tutorials. Quick starts are the part where you can pick the language you prefer. Let's say that I want to build an Angular web application. And it's, it's just showing you the prerequisites, what you need to install. And if you want to uh, end-to-end walkthrough, you can just click here. And it's going to direct you to the documentation. And it's just three minutes quick start. If you're interested to have um, application scenario running end-to-end -end and you want to build something from scratch, then you can go to tutorials. Choose the language you prefer. Let's say I want to build something with SP.NET Core. Then this is the entire um, documentation. You start with the introduction. When you follow all the steps, at the end, you have an application with Microsoft Graph up and running. Um, and uh, congrats, you build your first app by using the official tutorial. So um, this documentation, is, I find it quite useful. Uh, that's why I wanted to share. Another thing I want to quickly go through is a Graph Explorer. If you go to ak.ms slash g-explorer, you will be directed to um, Microsoft Graph Explorer. This is a free tool uh, and open source as well. Um, what I can do is I can quickly sign in. And my pop-up is here. I'm just going to choose the account I want to sign in. I'm choosing my demo account. Oops, let's choose another demo account. And after that, um, you can see my profile here. Then if I want to get my profile, I just run the query from here by using related uh, requests I want to have a get. As you see, I have a response overview. You can see my display name, job description, email address, and so on. So you can run any uh, thing, any API you want. There are actually more than 5,000 um, API in the background of Microsoft Graph. So capability is huge. What we can do is really uh, quite big. So you, you can just explore lots of things from here. For example, um, I want to get all my calendar events. I just click here, it changed the, it changed the endpoint from here and it gets what, whatever I have in my calendar here. 
And if you want to implement this in your application, if you're using C Sharp, you can just grab this code and paste it here. Same for JavaScript, Java, and Objective-C. Um, OK, this is it. I'm going to continue with how we're going to build something by using this data. So. Um, our big data is going to be here, um, Enter 65 data. By using Microsoft Graph, we are gonna we are, we are able to get lots of data in the background of Enter 65. Uh, we can consume um, again calendar data, uh, anything related to your organization in the directory. There, are, as I mentioned, there are more than 5,000 different um, APIs in the background of Graph. So capability is huge. Literally, any data in the Enter 65. Uh, you can reach out to your own data. And after the authentication by using Oath 2, 2.0, the rest is choosing your development environment. There's no limitation by using uh, the development environment. You can use Notepad or you can use Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, and you can choose your own language. Uh, in Graph, you don't have any restrictions of um, building, the, building your app in any language. You can. If you're a JavaScript developer, you can consume the API in your JavaScript application. If you're an iOS developer, you can consume, again, the same API in your iOS mobile application. And you can host your app in, in the wherever you want. Today, we're going to discover Azure solutions with um, Microsoft Graph. And hopefully, you like it. So key scenarios um, when we use Microsoft Graph is basically two things. That's why I divided the entire session into uh, two pieces plus the reporting. The first one is user interactive. The second one is non-interactive. First one uh, is when we create application in Azure Active Directory, um, we think that the application we are working on is going to be consumed by end user. Let's say it can be a web application where user clicks and log in. After that, uh, they can see their own data, like profile information, or get their email information, so on and so forth. Or it can be a chatbot, where um, chatbot can gather all of the calendar data uh, to you whenever you ask. These kind of scenarios, we always ask end user to consent the permission. So when we first start, then we give a pop-up saying that this application uh, wants to reach out to your calendar data. You need to give consent, and then we will be able to reach out. This application will reach out to your data. Second scenario uh, we, uh, we use is the um, uh, non-interactive scenario. Um, in non-interactive scenarios, it's common to uh, have background autom automations process automations, like uh, provisioning scenarios. Um, let's say whenever a new person is added, then create subscription and add that person in the, um, the uh, onboarding teams and so on. So in this case, we need consent from the admin administration. In Active Directory, we're asking admin to give consent uh, because in this case, these kind of scenarios, we don't engage with the end user. All of the provisioning is going to be in the background without any touch of the end user. And we will uh, only notify uh, maybe administrator saying that we changed this, this happened today, and so on and so forth. Let's start with the first scenario. Um, it's the user interactive scenarios, and it's the one that, as a developer, we really like building. like chatbot scenarios, web applications. I really like consuming Graph API in those kind of scenarios. So basically, what we do is um, once we build the application and register in Azure Active Directory, uh, and once user uh, logs in and click on Login button, then user consents to the permission required by app, let's say calendar permission, after that, app uses user access uh, token to make API calls. That means we reach out to users um, token by using MSOL. And the end result is going to be your app, uh, by, by using the permissions and the token, is going to get the data we required. Common scenarios for that is generally uh, email any person we want, 
calendar schedule, scheduler uh, bots where it asks you to, for example, th this is your calendar and you type bot that do this, do that, and bot is following your comments and calling graph API in the background and doing uh, whatever you were asking to do. So in Azure Active Directory for interactive app registration, we use delegated type of permissions. Um, that means that we always ask end user to give consent to us. In this case, it's showing like read user files, sign in and read user profile. That means that let's say on the top, we have sign in with Microsoft button. When a user clicks on that button, then uh, after giving the email address and password, we ask uh, with our application created in Active Directory, we show the end user saying that this application needs to re uh, read your emails um, and view your profile information. If you accept that, then um, application will be able to do API calls, graph API calls on behalf of you, then uh, with that, you will be able to return your calendar data or email data uh, through the bot. Let's say that we are using Lydia's access token. We ask Lydia to give consent to us. When she uh, gives the consent to us, then we are gonna return response 200 okay, and we get uh, Lydia's emails and um, all the email data in her inbox. But that doesn't mean that when Lydia gives us an access, uh, we can use other people's token. We cannot because um, every person who is using that application, that bot, needs to give consent on behalf of themselves. So whenever Lydia gives consent, if we try to call same application with someone else's um, token, in, even in the same organization, it's going to return 403, forbidden error, and we, we will just see that uh, access is denied because uh, we don't have the credentials and the token. So Peter needs to give permission on behalf of himself. Very common scenario is um, bot calls Microsoft Graph to access calendar mail task. This scenario is actually asked from many enterprise level customers as well as the developers. They like uh, working with uh, bots and I also, I'm a big fan of uh, bot framework too. Um, actually, uh, the new uh, skills are published by the bot framework. They just release a calendar skill, email skill and to-do skill. That means that these skills are pre-built for you and they're consuming Microsoft Graph already. You can literally just get the SDK. I just shared a link uh, here, ak.ms slash bot dash skills. Here you can get the um, SDKs, whichever skill you want, and um, you can run the code and test it for yourself, and uh, you can publish it to Azure uh, bot service, and your app is going to be ready. So. You can have your to-do bot, you can have your email or calendar bot. Same thing can be done all together as well. So these components, these skills can be attached to um, bot framework assistance too. So there is a, um, a bot framework solution called virtual assistant and you can actually attach this productivity components like email skill, to-do skill and calendar skill in your virtual assistant and your virtual assistant will be able to do all of it. So I highly recommend you to go ahead and check that. Let's continue with non-interactive scenarios. So non-interactive scenarios are generally the scenarios where administrators uh, will be quite interested. So we don't have any user in the scenario. Everything is happening in the background. We ask admin consents for the app for the specific permissions. Let's say uh, I'm running functions in the background. I am uh, saving all attached files sent by emails in our entire organization to a database. In this case, I need to register an app in Azure Active Directory. Then admin needs to consent the permissions and we need to define which permissions we require, like file, files read all, uh, users read all, mail read, and so on. 
Once admin gives the consent, then app uses its own credentials to authenticate. We don't need any user's um, authentication or token anymore. So um, at the end, app has full privilege. As long as we define here, app will be able to reach out to files, user read, and mail read. So um, in, in these kind of scenarios, we don't have a visibility of user. We just send notifications maybe in the administrator, administrator level uh, saying that subscription provisioning is done and so on. Um, let me give you an example about it. During the COVID situation, uh, we had lots of customers um, talking about moving entire working uh, or education or healthcare environment to teams. And um, because we didn't know that it's coming, they need to do, do these entire uh, move in a couple of weeks. We, we were really, really limited in the time. So what happened is that maybe thousands of users need, needed to register in Azure Active Directory. After that, we need to assign them in certain Teams groups so they can communicate with uh, their nurses, doctors, or their students, teachers, and so on. These kind of scenarios cannot be done manually by uh, administrator because it's, again, thousands of people, thousands of work. We need some kind of flow in the background running on behalf of the organization. So these non-interactive app scenarios are quite useful for this kind of background uh, workflow automations. In this case, in Azure Active Directory, once we create the application, application permission level should be, uh, the permission type should be application. And at the end, our admin needs to consent this uh, fr from Azure Active Directory. After that, our app will have full access of the data required. So let's take a look at that. App calls API to access any mailbox. Since we have we give the permission to reach out any mailbox, it's given by the admin. Then our app call our app can call any uh, user token and get the data we require. Let's say that we would like to gather everyone's sign-in log um, and we want to check if people working from home are working uh, after work times or if they're comfortable, um, if they're working too much uh, after work stuff. If you want to do some kind of analysis, again, we need to uh, have our admin consent to gather everyone's data. Then we can uh, create analytics with this, this kind of data. Okay, let's say that um, we have an onboarding solution. Whoever is added in the company, let's say I'm a new employee in company A, when I'm added in Azure Active Directory, then I, I want to be automatically added in a Teams group, which is called onboarding. In this case, um, whenever new subscription is created, uh, we are calling we are calling uh, Microsoft Graph from Azure Functions. Uh, this lightning uh, symbol is actually Azure Functions. When we call Graph API, then uh, Graph validates our app's endpoint, then saves subscription information in the database. After that, uh, we can either notify um, uh, not notify our administrator about the changes, or we can do provisioning in the external system. External system can be, uh, again, Microsoft Teams or somewhere else. We again call Graph API to do this provisioning. Let's think about a scenario like this. App manages user's calendar and replies the meeting invites. In this scenario, actually, I'm using a real-life um, reference. So this is the calendar from one of my colleagues, and she is literally ha uh, working like this every single day. And she, since she is working with the customers, uh, she does not have any time to check her emails during the day. That's why uh, whenever a new email comes, it directly uh, stays in the calendar, and she sometimes misses that, and it's really um, a 
quite a challenge for her. So uh, we were just discussing this and I built this and it was really useful and created lots of impact for uh, others too. Um, so what we can do in these kind of scenarios, since she doesn't have any time to check teams and uh, say reschedule this, reschedule that, because it's again repetitive uh, function, you can go to Outlook and do the same thing. What we want is the automation and um, background system handling the calendar for us. In this case, we build a logic apps and with logic apps, we are calling Microsoft Graph to reach out users calendar. And it is granted by, by the admin because end user is not touching anything in the process. What we do is, in the calendar, we first of all read whenever new event comes, whenever someone sends an invitation, then we view the calendar of the user. If there is a conflict, simply we call Graph API and we respond back to the organizer with, um, if there is no conflict, we reply back as, okay, we have accepted your uh, e uh, event. If there is a conflict, then again, we turn back to logic apps, we call the graph API to check uh, her or him upcoming five days. If it is too busy, like if there, there are more than 10 events in the calendar, then we say, sorry, in upcoming five days, we, I'm super busy, so I decline. And the, if it is, if there are less than 10 events in the calendar, then we send a reschedule request to the organizer. So organizer will be informed that I have availability in upcoming days. So this kind of workflow, we only, uh, only and only inform end user about what we are doing. So end user has no touch in this kind of workflow. We just send notification uh, to the end user through Microsoft Teams Flowbot and end user will have an idea what we are doing. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate how you can do it. Let's say that I can actually share this solution in my GitHub too. I build this flow and I'm just going to send a calendar invitation by using Graph Explorer. So let's say we have an admin, an admin person is super busy uh, during the week and he has no time to reply anything. And I am as Aichabash is sending the request to the admin and I would like to have a prioritization meeting. I'm gonna run my flow first, then I'm gonna send a request to my admin. I can actually do that from uh, my own calendar, but I really like using Explorer. Okay, this is my request and this is my admin's email address. I ran the query and post this event in his calendar and without touching end user, actually I can show the email here. Since admin has a conflict, um, it returns that uh, can be rescheduled. Let's check what we had in the flow. So here we see that we have prioritization meeting and we have another prioritization meeting conflicting with that. So it returns me the uh, can be rescheduled because admin's calendar actually on those days aren't quite busy. Let me show you. Okay, this is the admin calendar. If I create a request, let's say here, I want to, it, because it's an empty day, I just want to show you how uh, access um, acceptance process works. So what I'm going to do is uh, when I want with Aicha, I'm going to say 8 a.m. and I will invite my admin. 
in my company. I send the requests. I need to rerun my process. Here is, let's turn back to my mailbox and I get acceptance. What happens in the background is it's actually checking in the filter if admin has anything or not. If not, then it directly goes to accept and responds back with the accept. Otherwise, it just goes to, I can show in the designer, it just goes to uh, false because there's a conflict. Then it checks um, in upcoming five days, admin has how many meetings. If it is more than 10, then it just goes uh, to true. Then it says, sorry, I, ha I, have a, I have lots of meetings in the upcoming days, so I decline. If not, then uh, it just sends the options, like we want to reschedule to the same day, other times, or later this week or next week. And all these, when all these are happening, admin is only getting, this is my admin. This is my admin. Admin is only getting information like one on one with Aicha accepted, one on one meeting reschedule requested. Everything is just an information level. So my calendar manager running on Logic Apps is just managing everything on behalf of uh, the person, admin. Okay, last but not least, I just want to mention that let the scenario drive your design choice. If your scenario is user interactive, if you're building web app where user needs to log in and it's like personal stuff, then use delegated permissions. If it is a background process running in the function apps or uh, logic apps in, in this case, um, it is just an automation and it's a provisioning scenario, it's better to use application permissions and app auth. Last part of my today's presentation is reporting analytics and insights with Microsoft Graph. So let's think about a scenario where we need auditing process, uh, but we are all working from home right now and we are, we are not at office, so we cannot check how many people are working, how many hours, and if they're comfortable working over time and so on. So companies uh, auditing uh, processes are really needing these kind of informations. So for, for this kind of info, we can use Microsoft Graph Data Connect. Microsoft Graph Data Connect has specific data where we can connect by using Azure Data Factory, and we can get user profile messages, calendar events. Um, so these are the specific data we can get, and there are some others. Um, and after that, with Azure Data Factory, we can um, transfer our data to Azure Data Lake, or we can directly connect to uh, Azure Snaps for analytics purposes, um, where we can create a, a special queries, let's say, um, between those days and these, these people under this group, um, and specific information can be gathered by using Snaps. And if you have any purpose of creating reporting, then you can use Power BI Snaps. Azure Snaps has a direct connection with Power BI. We can actually show the data from Azure Snaps to Power BI uh, automatically, and you can create great charts and um, pie charts, great information for the business. Another scenario for insights and reporting, if you require more information, let's say, for example, call quality about Teams or um, what's happening in the emails um, or in the Azure Active Directory, in the directory, for example, um, how many people uh, get subscription recently if they're provisioned to Office to Teams. So these kind of information, if you're looking for, then we can use either Logic Apps or Azure Functions. Actually, Logic Apps are the ones we can, if you are looking for a low code environment, Logic Apps could be your friend. And if you're looking for um, jobs, then you can use Azure Functions. We can save our data. Uh, we can gather our data by using Microsoft Graph and save the same data in Azure Blob Storage. And then we can transfer data to data like um, or, and, or also Data Factory with Azure Snaps Analytics, 
we can uh, again query data. These kind of tools are quite important for ad admin level uh, because sometimes they need specific information. And um, when company has uh, hundreds of employees, then this data, like teams or sign-in logs or auditing logs, are easily like uh, millions of data weekly. So to be able to do some queries, searching uh, by the days or searching by the email address and uh, so on, then the uh, Azure Snaps Analytics are a really great tool for us. Um, again, for the reporting purposes, Azure Snaps Analytics has the direct connection with Power BI. Actually, even uh, Azure Data Lake Storage has the connection with Power BI too, if you're looking for reporting and getting some insights about your organization. Um, you can use Snaps Plus Power BI and with the connection of Graph, you can actually gather the entire M365 data. With that, uh, I think I'm kind of over time, but th these are the documentations I talked about. I, I think that uh, they can be useful if you are uh, learn if you're new to Graph and Azure, you can find all of the Microsoft Graph documentation and the solutions related with Azure under ak.ms slash m-graph. Um, again, if you would like to play around a little bit before you implement anything to your app, you can go to Graph Explorer, it's g-explorer. Um, if you want to discover what kind of solutions you can build, there is a great uh, series of blog, uh, which is called 30 Days MS Graph. Uh, you can go to aka.ms slash 30 days MS graph and you can reach out to all uh, blog series. It's 30 different documentation talking about um, different scenarios. And um, Microsoft Graph has a huge GitHub repository open. If you if you want to search some solutions, if you want to get, uh, for example, chatbot example or React application example, I highly recommend you to go ahead and check the GitHub repository of the product team. And last but not least, if you have any questions, you can always go to Stack Overflow with the tag Microsoft-Graph-API. It's an up-to-date uh, tag. You can always ask your questions there and uh, we will try to answer all of them. And thank you so much for joining my session today. Uh, if you have any questions about my presentation or you want to learn um, something specific about what I talked today or something related with Graph in Azure, you can always reach out to me from um, Twitter. And uh, if you tweet it, I can try to uh, answer it back to you.